This year for Pentecost, I decided to write a letter to the church, the church universal, a birthday letter, if you will. And so I thought I'd share it with you. Happy birthday, church. Can you believe another year has flown by? How old are you now, anyway? I'm guessing it's about 2,000 years or so, but to be honest, math isn't my strong suit, so I don't quite know. Suffice it to say, you've aged out of youth group. But do you remember your early beginnings? Because I do. I remember that at first, the earliest followers of Jesus were so scared that they were hiding out after his death, not sure what to do. I remember that Jesus rose and brought words of peace, reminding them that he would be with them. But even these many appearances, they didn't seem to put Peter and Mary, James and John and the others at ease. But eventually, eventually you were born, church. Just as Jesus promised, the Holy Spirit arrived with tongues of fire and a rushing wind and it moved the earliest followers. It gave them the strength to leave hiding and begin to talk about Jesus again. It gave them the courage to leave the comfort of being all together and go to the north and the south and the east and the west telling stories about how Jesus had taught them about new commandments. Commandments to love God with all their heart and their mind and their spirit and to love their neighbors as themselves and to love their enemies. They told of how Jesus healed people and how he said that just as you give to the least of these, you give to me. Church, those early days were nothing short of amazing. People were willing to face torture and death just to keep gathering together. Now, sure, they had to hide and meet in secret, but more and more people were joining them, joining in the gathering, all because the Spirit kept moving in and among you, church. But you know what started to happen. You know that in the beginning they were united and they were super close, but soon they started to disagree, as all humans do. Different people had different ideas and soon splits began to happen. The Orthodox split off from the Catholics and later the Reformers began to see things differently than the Catholics. And eventually you had new names, Lutheran, and Presbyterian, and Methodist, and Church of England, and Congregational. And your people, they couldn't quite agree. They couldn't agree on things like baptism, whether you should baptize infants or when people were old enough to decide for themselves. People couldn't decide on communion, whether it was the actual body and blood of Jesus or a meal representing that last meal. Your people couldn't agree on whether or not a bishop should tell all the churches what to do or whether each church could decide for themselves. And soon, church, you were so very divided, and the divisions kept coming. But now the separations continued around issues like slavery and women and eventually GLBT issues. But sometimes, though, church, you managed to remember Jesus' words that all may be one, and different denominations would work their issues out and join together, just as our church, the United Church of Christ, did when the evangelical and the reformed and the congregational and the Christian churches worked together and became one. But despite all this difference, church, one thing remains. You are beautiful. There are so many expressions of you in our world. Sometimes your people worship calmly and quietly. And other times there's loud clapping and waving of hands in church. 
Sometimes your people are dressed to the nines with their Sunday finest, and other times your people gather in rags to hear stories of Jesus. Regardless, there is beauty in you, church. And I, I, I almost hate to mention it, but I'm guessing you've probably noticed that less and less people claim to be church people these days. Now, you are no longer the it place to be on Sunday morning. In fact, you probably heard that people go to the beach or to brunch or to their kids' sporting events. You might have even noticed that, that people stay home to read the paper and drink coffee rather than get together for church. Why do you suppose that is? Is it because you're not as needed? Oh, wait, 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 it's your birthday. I don't want to get you down. In fact, let's remember to celebrate. Now, church, I don't know if you noticed or not, but yesterday, on the eve of your birth, hundreds of thousands of people from all across the world went to church. Now, sure, it was for a royal wedding, (laughs) but they still went to church because the Bishop Michael Curry brought the word. He reminded the world what you, the church, are about. You're about love. Not romantic love, even though it was a big fancy wedding. But as Curry said, love is not selfish or self-centered. Love can be sacrificial and in so doing becomes redemptive. And that way of unselfish, redemptive love changes lives. And it can change this world. He said, if you don't believe me, just stop and think or imagine. Think and imagine, well, think and imagine a world where love is the way. Imagine our homes and families when love is the way. Imagine neighborhoods and communities where love is the way. Imagine governments and nations where love is the way. Imagine business and commerce where love is the way. Imagine this tired old world when love is the way, unselfish, sacrificial, redemptive. Curry continued by saying, when love is the way, then no child will go to bed hungry in this world ever again. When love is the way, we will let justice roll down like a mighty stream and righteousness like an ever-flowing brook. When love is the way, poverty will become history. When love is the way, the earth will be a sanctuary. When love is the way, we will lay down our swords and shields down by the riverside to study war no more. When love is the way, he said, there's plenty of good room, plenty of good room for all of God's children. Church, Curry showed the world what you were about. When you are your absolute best, you are about love, about helping the people who gather together to learn how to love about helping people who gather together to support one another because love is hard, hard work. Well, church, on your birthday, it's only right that we give you some gifts. What can we possibly give? Now, you probably think I'll say that we can give our time and our talent and our financial means, and yes, we should do that. But really, the gift we should give the church, give you, church, is love. Love of the people next to us in the pews. Love of the people in our neighborhood who don't walk through the doors. Love of the people in our city who might be different from us. Love of the people in our country who vote differently, who think differently, who sound differently. Love of the people in our world our friends, and our enemies. And church, 
it's only right on your birthday that you get a cake and we, you get to make a wish as you blow out your 2,000 some odd candles. Now, besides wishing for a ex fire extinguisher, because that's a lot of candles, what do you wish for, church? Do you wish that we would rejoice in gathering together? Do you wish that we would invite others to join with us in learning how to love? Do you wish that we would celebrate your presence throughout history and work to re-envision what the future holds? Whatever it is you wish for, church, as you blow out your candles this year, it is my hope and prayer that we might help make your wish come true. Happy birthday, church. Here's to many, many more. Amen. <laughs>